2023 was a game changing year for millets. This was the year that the United Nations declared as the International Year of Millets, with the support from over 70 countries and India taking the lead. But that's not all. In the same year, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman announced the Sri Anna scheme. The central government named millets as Sri Anna and aimed to popularize millet through this scheme. So, why is India focusing on millets? And how far have we come in executing the Sri Anna scheme? Let's find out in this video. Yeah, millets are given so much of importance because, uh, as we said, there is a lot of nutrition in millets. Like, uh, people are looking at what happened 30 or 75 or 100 years ago when people were far more healthier. That was because they used to uh, consume a lot of uh, grains, coarse grains. Like, uh, we have heard that how people will uh, drink uh, uh, gruel, rag ragi gruel and spend the whole of the other day. Consuming Sriyana means it, it is a, a real uh, a source of good health. So that is one of the objective of this. I would want to say what the Prime Minister uh, said in March last year. He said, he said Sriyana is becoming a medium of holistic development in India. It is linked with Gao as well as Gari. You know, it's uh, what he calls is, is it's a door to prosperity for small farmers of the country and it's a cornerstone of nutrition for crows of Indians. And Sriyana is, is a a felicitation of the Adv Adivasi community. India is now in the process of promoting and encouraging growing of millets with the implementation of the Sri Anna scheme. The objective of uh, Sri Anna is that you know the government wants farmers to take on the cultivation of this so that they can meet the increasing demand. Uh, in recent uh, uh, in the over the past few years, Sri Anna's consumption has gone up by about 30% or you can say the demand in the market for nutri cereals has gone up by 30%. So one, we have to meet that. Two, there is, uh, they want to promote Sri Anna because uh, it doesn't have, uh, you know, you don't need much of labor, you don't need much of water, you don't need much of fertilizers. So that in a way will really help uh, increase its production. And what is happening is, uh, since there has been pressure on uh, the food grains such as wheat and rice over the past couple of years, so that sort of creates a sort of food security and also tends to push up prices. So this can be also a strategy to control prices and also ensure that people have you know multiple options of food. That basically is the objective, and it was also announced uh, as part of the International Year of millets, I mean, which was observed in 2023. The Sri Anna scheme has come up with a unique vision to increase millet usage in our daily consumption. But has it been successful? So if you look at uh, the millet category, uh, what's really important to understand is the value that the crop brings, uh, right? So these crops are you know, very low water intensive. Uh, the irrigation requirement is quite low. Uh, the disease proliferation in these crops is also very low, hence you require low pesticides. Uh, they are high in protein content, low glycemic index. So overall, if you look at this crop, not just that it is healthy, but it is environmentally friendly. And given the context of the climate change and weather vagaries that we're seeing, this becomes even more important. And hence, the scheme that the government has implemented over the last couple of years, the Sri Anna scheme, becomes of a lot of relevance uh, in the current times and also very important. So, if you look at the scheme, uh, the intention was to promote millet cultivation, right? And if you look at how the zone area for the millet category has been over the last five years, what we see is that while the government has focused on this scheme, we don't see a material shift in the sown area under these crops. So about five years back, the sown area under millets was about six and a half percentage, uh, considering the gross crop area in our country for both uh, Kharif and Rabi season. That uh, last year stood at around 7%. So only about a 0.5% increase in the sown area. So that's the supply side story. 
but if we see on the demand side one sees that the price of some of the millets for example the price of jowar and ragi have increased by about 40% and 25% on year between april to december uh, of 2023 on a yoy comparison now whenever there is a sharp price queue that prompts the farmers to go for the crop uh, in the next season so we should ideally see more zone area coming in the uh, subsequent season and sometimes these schemes tend to have a lag in their effect and that's what we are hoping for that it could happen uh, this time around so from an overall zone area perspective not much change but given that the demand has increased and contributed to a price increase there could be some increase that we can see for the sowing of these crops in the subsequent years when a new agricultural scheme is introduced there are always concerns about how it can impact the farmers so how have farmers benefited from the sri anna scheme we can see how prices have really improved for millets over the past couple of years and the government is also making efforts like increasing the minimum uh, support prices the government has also been complementing this like every every year when the kharif crop sowing begins the government just before the kharif crop begins the government comes up with minimum support prices for over 20 crops so millets are dominant in this basket of crops for which msp is announced so uh, over the uh, almost for a decade now uh, the uh, nutri cereals or an anna uh, shri annas they have been uh, getting uh, fair treatment or uh, their weightage in in the increase has been rising so uh, prices are nearly double if you see uh, the past uh, past decade so that way farmers benefit the other one is farmer benefit because you don't need much of labor so the labor cost go down in fact input cost go down because you need less of water you need less of fertilizer so these are the uh, benefits that farmers get out of sri anna and also uh, we should also take note that uh, growing millets will also ensure a better environment In 2023 the center extensively focused on creating awareness and propagating the objectives of the scheme through road shows mahotsavs and two day millet conferences across the country So you know many of these uh, mahotsavs in the world food india event uh, that's been taking place for the last 7 years it started off around uh, 2017 uh, clearly the intent again there is that uh, given that these crops are more environmentally friendly uh, you know you need to enhance the food processing sector too right in india a lot of damage happens to crops post harvest right we have significant damage happening to fruits and vegetables so if you want to control inflation uh, reduce the volatility in crop prices we need to strengthen the post harvest infrastructure and that's where the food processing sector comes in and that is where uh, you know the world food india event and such mahotsavs uh, become important uh, the objective here what we understand is that if we look at our agri exports more than 50% contribution today comes from paddy and wheat now paddy is a very water guzzling crop uh, paddy and wheat put together are also very agri input heavy crops a lot of fertilizer goes into them uh, and hence it is important for us to diversify our food basket when it pertains to food processing and exports and that is where we believe that the food world food india event is playing a role in serving as showing that you know where india can showcase that it is a leading part of the global food supply value chain Uh, so we've seen a lot of MOUs being signed uh, to the tune of around uh, 331 billion. 27 MOUs were signed. Of course, it remains to be seen how many of them actually fructify on ground and go, uh, you know, ahead just from an announcement. They actually become uh, live deals in place. Uh, but we can see that the event is gaining a lot of traction. Uh, many countries are participating in it, and it is definitely going to help India diversify. our agri export basket not limited only to paddy and wheat but to other crops fruits and vegetables many of which in in uh, many of these commodities india has either the number one or number two position in terms of production interestingly many of these commodities india also has a number one number two position in the post harvest losses and if we are able to reduce that 
those can be used not just domestically but also in a large manner to cater to the export market as pointed out by industry watchers in this video the sri anna scheme has helped india accelerate the growth as well as consumption of millets but we still have a long way to go to make it as a part of our daily food culture it's a journey but with everyone on board we can make millets as a part of our regular life